Hey guys, Pansy here and welcome to my BDO Worker Empire Guide. In this video, I'll tell you everything you need to know to build up your own worker empire. We'll cover all the basics and go through city by city in a modular manner, taking a look at all the important nodes along the way. I'll have a table of contents with timestamps in the description down below, and also include any additional information which may help you. Do note, this guide was made with newer and beginner players in mind and the primary goal is to help you get started off. There are many various routes you can go after you're more experienced. Workers and nodes are a unique part of the BDO experience. It can be overwhelming to start off, but don't worry, we'll take things step by step. Now, before we get started, please do like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate all the support. You can catch me on my live stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern on YouTube or twitch.tv slash I'm Pansy. And you can check out all the links down below in the description. Section one, types of workers. There are five tiers of workers in BDO. The first is the naive workers. They have white names. The second is the normal workers. They have green names. The third is the skilled workers. They have blue names. Fourth is the professional workers. They have gold names. And fifth is the artisan workers. They have orange names. I've listed these out in ascending order from the worst to the best. Don't ever purchase naive or normal workers. When you're first starting out, you can definitely purchase the blue ones, which are skilled workers. Try to get a few skilled goblins to give yourself a little head start. The professional workers are what you want to go for, and you'll be leveling those up and trying to promote them. Artisan workers are your end goal. They are the best of the best. As the tier of the worker increases, their stats also increase. That means they'll be performing tasks at a faster pace. So initially you might have a bunch of skilled workers, but eventually you want to start getting all your workers to professional and trying to get artisan workers whenever you can. The best way to get artisan workers is to level up your worker at professional to level 20. Try to promote them twice. If they fail, fire them and get a new professional worker and rinse and repeat. The reason you don't want to go all the way to level 30 is because the experience required from level 20 to 30 is very large. So it's actually more time efficient to just fire that worker and get a new one and start over. You would also want to try to snipe them off the marketplace whenever they get put on, but it's quite rare so keep your eyes open. Now let's see the different races available for the workers. You have the goblins, humans, giants, papu, and fetus. So the goblins and the papus are the quickest. They have the highest work speed, movement speed, but the lowest luck and stamina. The humans have decent work speed, low movement speed, very high luck, and decent stamina. The giants have the lowest work speed, movement speed, luck, but really high stamina. Because of their low stats but high stamina, giants are the best suited for farms. Finally, you have the Fetus, which has a decent work speed, low movement speed, low luck, but also has high stamina. Ideally, you'd want to get as many goblins as you can if you're looking for the highest yield and most money. However, you can use humans for certain nodes which require rare procs. For example, we have eggs which come from the node which gives us chicken. The eggs are the rare proc, and a human will get more of these than a goblin. However, this advantage of luck is outshined when the node is extremely far away. In those situations, goblins and papus will outpace a human. The only time that the tier of the worker doesn't really matter is when you're using giants for farms. That's because the stamina is the only factor when keeping a worker on a farm. The higher tier does not increase the quickness of which it does the work because the work on the farm is instant. All they need is a high stamina. Section 2. How to get a worker. First, let's take a look at how to hire a worker. It's very simple. In every major town or city which has a worker supervisor, come up to them and speak to them. Once you do, you'll have multiple options. The primary options here are contract workers and worker exchange. Contract workers exchanges your energy to roll a worker and then you can purchase their service. Or on worker exchange, you can buy the workers that are posted by other players. As you can see here, other players have posted their skilled workers. Generally, if you're going to buy one, just keep in mind, you want to buy professional or artisan workers. And when you do, take a look at the number of promotions they have. A lot of times, players like to post professional workers where they failed all of their promotions and they're just recycling them. So if you want to purchase those, by all means, use them as a filler 
but just keep in mind that they're being sold because they ran out of promotions. And once you have enough, you can start rolling your own professional workers and promote them yourself. Next, let's take a look at contract workers. If you click on it, you'll get an option. It says it costs five energy to hire a worker. Hit yes. Now it just consumed five energy to roll this worker. Here we have a human worker. If I hit view another, it'll consume five more energy for a new one. Now, if I don't want to just uh, spam click here, which is a danger because a few times I've personally clicked past the professional workers by spamming this uh, too quickly. So there's another option that's view continuously. So if you click this and you can select which level worker you want to keep rolling until, you can hit say professional and then the number of times, I'll just put it as maximum. It depends on how much energy you have left. Hit view continuously and it'll automatically start rotating through them. So one thing to remember whenever you're hiring a worker, always make sure you have money either in your inventory or in the storage of the respective town. There have been times when I rolled a professional worker and I didn't have any money on me and I had to pass on it. So it was really unfortunate. So just be mindful and remember to bring your cash. Here we go. We rolled a professional. I guess I'll hire it for the sake of the video. So in order to hire it, just hit hire worker. And there we go. We got the worker. Now, if we look at our worker menu, he will be right here. There we go. So now after you've got your worker, just hit M and go to a node you want to make him work at. So I'm going to go to this farm here. Here's a potato node. I'll just click that. I'll select the worker that I just got, the professional human worker at Velia. Then make sure to change the number of times to repeat this process and set it to whatever you want. Uh, I set it to maximum, whatever. And then start work. The reason I want to do that is because after he finishes one round, it'll automatically keep going back until he's out of stamina. Once the worker is out of stamina, you're going to have to feed them. In order to feed the worker, open up the worker menu by clicking your worker icon on the top left. Then go to recover all. Over here, if you have the respective food in your inventory, you can consume it to restore your worker stamina. Here I'm using beer, but you can also use other things like the blue variant or grilled bird meat but beer is the easiest one for me to make as I have a lot of potatoes being produced. So just hit confirm and then they're all restored. Now when you hit repeat all, the workers will repeat the previous job they were working on before they ran out of stamina. In every major town, you get one free worker slot and if you want to hire more workers, you need to purchase lodging. To do so, go to a respective town, then click the menu on the top right and hit lodging. This will identify all the houses which provide lodging. Now just click on it and select lodging and purchase it. Now the final way to increase your worker lodging is through the Pearl Shop. Let's head to the function. Now go to slot expansion and scroll all the way down. Here you'll see the different options for lodging. You can purchase three of these for each family and these are really useful to have. But however, don't worry guys, in order to have an effective worker empire, you can absolutely spend nothing at all and just go full free to play and still have a really nice worker empire. Just get more contribution points and purchase the lodging. This is only really necessary when you want to go above and beyond. You have maximum lodging, you have all the important notes, now you want to do more, maybe you want more workshops or something. So don't worry, this is just a beginner's guide. We're not going to go with that in depth and you'll be perfectly fine without any of these. Quick tips on freeing up storage and contribution points. So in order to build an effective worker empire, you need a lot of contribution points. If you're like me, you probably spent a lot of CP in expanding your storage for your respective cities. So you might want to try to free those up. So there's a few ways where you can conserve storage space without sacrificing contribution points. The first way would be to use alternate characters. For example, I have this character in Velia, and I just dump all the junk that I don't use on a regular basis on his inventory. Now you can get more inventory space on a character by hitting O and going to suggested quest tab and doing the quest line for inventory expansion. The next method is utilizing wagons to save some space. Take out your wagon and hit open inventory, then just deposit whatever items you don't want and then you can just put your wagon back in the stable and you'll save some space. And last, the final method is to pay to win. Go to the Pearl Shop, head to Function and Slot Expansion, 
Scroll down and you'll see the slot expansions for storages of various cities. Just click on one, hit the number of slots you want to purchase, and buy. You can expand up to a maximum of 192 slots in each storage. Section 3, how to cook beer. Now let's take a look at how to cook beer because that's the easiest way to recover the stamina of your worker and I'll be showing you how to get the nodes for potatoes and wheat in the later sections. So first you need five starch food like wheat, potato, barley. These are all interchangeable for this recipe. I'll be using wheat as an example. So I came here to the gold toad inn and here we can purchase a cooking utensil. Let's get one of those right here. Then for each cook of the beer, you need five of the wheat or potatoes, two leaving agents, one sugar, and six mineral water. All of these materials can be found here in the store and you can just purchase them directly. They're really cheap. So the leaving agent, sugar, and mineral water. I've already got it in my inventory. So next we're gonna go to our residence. So open up your map, go to the town, you just click on the house, hit residence and purchase. You purchase it for contribution points. Here, I got one for one contribution point. Now let's run over to the house. All right, now that we're inside, hit place mode and you'll see in the top right, your cooking utensil. Click on that and just drag and drop it in here. Now hit escape and exit out. Now we see the cooking utensil we just purchased. Go up to it and hit R. Now here, you'll see the option to use your material. So we need to put in five wheat or potato, two leaving agents, one sugar, and six mineral water. Now if you have multiples of this recipe, you can put the sa same number for one cast and hit batch production. We'll just repeatedly cook the beer. Remember, don't put more than the recipe requires, but only keep enough for one cast of it and then use batch production if you want multiple. Now, we're only going to make one cast of this, so hit start cooking, and your character will start cooking the beer. There we go, the beer was cooked, and we got a few more. So now, next time, if I want to cook beer, I can actually go to learned only here, hit beer, and my previous recipe will be saved. I just hit select, and if I, have, if I had the materials here, it'll automatically fill up here, and I can start cooking again. So that's how you make beer, and you can feed your workers and keep them going. So that's why you really want to have wheat or potatoes early on. So you have a constant supply of beer, which you can cook and feed your workers and keep your empire working. Section four, efficiently rolling for workers and unlocking nodes. So the two ways to get workers are by worker exchange and contract workers. If we're using contract workers and rolling energy for a chance at a good worker, it's going to take a lot of energy in order to get the good ones. So I like to use an alt which I store at any of the major cities where I want a worker and I just AFK on her. So while I'm AFKing, I like to do a few things. First, I use the Turing Gates buff from the campsite. This gives me an additional one energy recovery. I make sure I have the Commasil's Blessing which gives another two recovery. And I also like to AFK in a bed. So just purchase a residence in any of the towns that you're AFKing in and you can drop a bed in there and just um, AFK in that and that also increases your energy region as you see on the screen. Now if you don't want to AFK in a bed and you want to do some life skills that's perfectly okay. There's a few things you could do. You could be using you can be using your time for AFK fishing, you can be doing AFK processing, cooking, alchemy, training, or whatever. Whatever that doesn't require energy consumption, you could be doing it. So these are just a few ways to maximize your time while you're AFKing to roll for better workers. Now that you know how to get a worker and take care of them, here's how you unlock your nodes. In order for it to show up on your map like this, you need to first be there in person and unlock the knowledge. You do that by walking in range of the node. Now, once you have it unlocked, there's two ways to actually activate it. So the first way is through the map. You just click on the node and hit invest contribution. If you're not there in person, it'll cost 10 energy to invest the contribution points. So let's do that. Now within a node, you'll have the harvesting node. For example, this is for gathering mushrooms. 
So if you click that and hit invest contribution, it'll take another 10 energy and activate this. So now you can utilize your workers to gather that node. The other way to invest in a node is by speaking to a node manager and going to node management. Now you'll be able to invest contribution points without spending any energy. Now in the following sections, we're going to go through town by town and pick out the useful nodes for beginners. If you're a more advanced player, feel free to make adjustments as you see fit, but this is a good place to start off. Section 5, Valia. Valia is a very common base of operations for many players and it has some useful nodes around it, so it's definitely worth investing some workers in this area primarily for Logia Farm, Bertali Farm, and Finto Farm because Logia Farm gives you potatoes, Bertali and Finto Farm give you potato and chicken meat. Both of these are very useful items and they sell very well. Now, if you want, you can get the corn nodes down southwest, which does take a little bit more CP. I really wouldn't recommend it unless you have a lot to spare, but a little bit further off from that is the Ancient Stone Chamber, which is also okay. But the most important ones here would be Logia, Bartali, and Finto Farms. Now to the northwest of Velia, you have Olvia. The only notable one I like here is the Grape Node. There is stuff like uh, olives nearby, but I'd really just recommend this one if you're getting anything because grapes do sell pretty well. Section 6, Heidel. Heidel is also a good option for a base of operations and it has some useful nodes nearby. The first being Alejandra Farm for cooking honey, which is always selling out, Costa Farm for wheat and flax, and Meridi Plantation for wheat and flax as well. Wheat is used for cooking, or you can use it to process and then cook. Otherwise, flax is used for processing, and usually flax is quite saturated on the market, it doesn't really sell that well, but it is easy processing XP, so if you do pick it up, that would be the reason. There are some other notable nodes nearby. Lynch Farm Ruins for Trace of Savagery and Hunting, Northern Plain of Serendia for Red Tree Lumps, Red Tree Lumps always sell well, and if you look near Glish, you have Glish Ruins for Trace of Origin and Trace of Hunting as well. I really don't uh, invest too much into the traces because I don't have Artisan Workers which are maxed out which could efficiently gather those, so at the moment I haven't really picked these up but if you do have the workers and the CP to spare don't hesitate to try it out however in other cities there are some easier nodes to pick up for money section 7 Calpheon, Portiferia, Keplan, and Trent Calpheon has some useful nodes around it some notable ones are Quint Hill which has red tree lumps down south you have Bear Riverhead which is for tin ore and powder of earth now, nearby is Northern Wheat Plantation, which has wheat, barley, and paprika. All three nodes are useful for cooking. However, it do all of these nodes I've mentioned require quite a bit of CP to be invested. So only do it if you have some to spare or really need those items. Otherwise, there are some more useful items we'll see. Now, if we move up to Portiferia, there are some nearby nodes which you can pick up for a bit of money, being Circa Island for dried fish, Randis Island for dried fish and dried octopus, and Beza Island for dried fish and dried octopus. So dried octopus I believe counts as a seafood, so, so these are actually kind of useful for cooking. Coming to southwest of Calpheon, you have Trent. Nearby Trent, there is a few timber resources such as cedar and fir. I'd only pick these up if you specifically need those. Otherwise, uh, Trent's really just useful for making timber crates. If you're not making those, I wouldn't worry too much about Trent. Now moving on to Kaplan, there's a couple of useful nodes here, uh, notably coal nodes. The first one here at Kaplan Quarry is easy to get, it's only one CP investment, it's right next to Kaplan. However, Gluttony Cave, it's a bit further away, you have to curve around. So I'd at least pick up this one if you're looking for coal, and this one if you really need coal and using it for other things. Once again, these are not high priority, but if you do have spare CP and workers, uh, I'd give it a shot. Now the final notable thing about Calpheon is Star's End. Only come here if you're looking for Black Star or investing into a Black Star and need Mass of Pure Magic. It does take quite a bit of CP to invest into this, so if you need those, go for it. Otherwise, this is not for money. 
Section 8, Altanova. Now starting from Altanova, you start making a bit more money from your worker nodes. At first glance, south of Altanova seems like a very tempting option with the abandoned iron mine and easy mining nodes, but I would actually recommend on holding off on that unless you really need those ore. My recommendation goes into uh, Acacia Sap, White Cedar Sap, and Elder Tree Sap. These are all on high demand due to the requirement of them for upgrading your ships to a Caravel or a Gallius. So they're always on pre-order and are easy to sell and sell for a good price. So to get started with that, you come west of Altanova and swing up to Omar Lava Cave and then to Medea Shore and Kusha. Near Kusha, you have Stonetail Wasteland, which is for Acacia Sap. Then you have Elric Shrine, which has a White Cedar Sap and Medea Northern Highlands, which is also for White Cedar Sap. So make sure you pick up these three nodes definitely. They're worth the investment. Now when you look at Tariff, there really isn't too much over there. I'd only recommend getting uh, nodes around there if you really need them. But for now, I wouldn't recommend investing into it. So let's swing over to the east of Altanova now. So if you come up Altanova Gateway and Rock Post, you get two options, Gorgo Belt and Veterans Canyon. I pick up both of them because Elder Tree Sap is one of the three high demand saps and they're definitely worth uh, investing into. Now, along with those, you can go a bit further up north to Lacial Falls or Kunid's Vacation Spot for Purified Water and Bag of Muddy Water. Bag of Muddy Water are used for Tier 1 Barters and they do eventually sell and purified water is used for alchemy, so those also tend to sell eventually, so they're not bad options. I'd definitely prioritize the Elder Tree Sap, Acacia, and White Cedar Sap before getting into those. So in total, you have three nodes over here, two nodes here, and two nodes here. So that's a total of seven workers, and you can accommodate everything in Altanova. You can get up to about eight workers from Altanova if you get all the lodging. But if you do want to invest on some more nodes around here, you can get an additional two in Abun down south. Section 9, Sandgrain Bazaar. Sandgrain Bazaar has some excellent nodes nearby that you can invest in. First being Bazaar Farmland where it has Nutmeg and Tef. In terms of order of priority, Tef would be the last one you'll be getting here, but Nutmeg is number one. And then come all the way down south to Crescent Mountains. Ignore the Iron Ore here. Those are worthless. But if you come down to Crescent Shrine, you have Date Palms. Those are number two for sure. They're excellent. They're great XP for leveling up cooking, as well as just directly selling on the marketplace. Then number three, I'd pick up the Titanium Ore. Those also sell well. And then finally, come back to Bazaar Farmland and pick up Tef. At the very least, make sure you get Nutmeg and Date Palms. The other two are optional. Section 10, Shakatu Village. Next up is Shakatu Village. It's an excellent area to invest into as there are some really useful nodes nearby. The first being Shakatu Farmland. As previously stated, Akaman was not a good place to invest for figs because figs over here for the same amount of CP, you get two fig nodes. So those are a good option. Then if you come up northeast, all the way to Yalt Canyon, Gahaz Bandit Lair, then Bamboo Valley, you have Freake over here. Then Iris Canyon has Nutmeg and Elder Tree Sap, which are top priority. And then finally, an optional one is Vanadium Moor down south at Mock Canyon. Section 11, Valencia City. Valencia City is one of my favorite places to invest in for nodes because there are three solid nodes right next to Valencia. That being Valencia Plantation, Ertl Farm, and Fohalam Farm. First up, I'd pick up the date palms at Valencia Plantation, then the date palms at Ertl Farm, and then the free K at Valencia Plantation, and finally, if you really want Tef, you can get it over here. But the date palms alone, if you have a very high tiered worker, say Artisan Goblins, these can actually net you over 10 mil per day from the date palms alone. So make sure you pick them up, these are very important. Section 12, Arihaza Town. Now, directly east of Valencia City, you have Ariha Palm Forest. This is attached to both Arihaza Town and Valencia, so you can use either one to get here. Now, there are two nodes here and both are really nice. The coconuts actually sell out on the NA market all the time, and usually there's a lot of pre-orders on them, so they're excellent to sell. Now, going up north, you have the sulfur mines. 
this takes a bit of CP to get to, but if you had to do it, I'd go from Arihaza and up north rather than going from Valencia. So if you go up north here, you get to Gavinia Volcano Zone. Here you can get the Vanadium Ore and Titanium Ore nodes. Then Gavinia Crater has Titanium Ore. And then Gavinia Coastal Cliff has Vanadium Ore. There is another node here, Route Sulfur Works. Sulfur isn't really worth much, I'd ignore this one. Section 13, Kama Sylvia. Coming to Kama Sylvia, you got Grana and Old Wisdom Tree. This is more of a zone for veteran players who are making crates for the most part. You can pick up Knock Ore at Southern Kama Sylvia, Lake Flander, and Hollow Forest. However, Lake Flander is the only one which has uh, good powders. The others aren't worth as much. So you could probably pick this one up, but this is not a top priority area. If you're a veteran player, you don't need me to tell you how to utilize this area. But for a beginner player, there are better investments in terms of CP and money. Section 14, Dragon. Next up is Duvencroon. There are a few notable nodes around here. First one being Shira Ruins in Gervish Mountains. They have Bracken. In North America, Bracken sells for about 6.5-6.6k each and are usually sold out, so you can definitely take a crack at these. And then right next to Duvencroon, there are some starch nodes being barley and corn directly attached to Duvencroon, but it is a bit expensive in terms of CP, so if you're going for starch nodes, I definitely recommend using Velia or Heidel, but if you must get them, you can. Now you can also pick up Fountain of origin for the trace of origin i'd only recommend that if you really need it because it does take a bit of cp to get here and then down here at calc canyon these two nodes do drop mithril which are in high demand however it does take five cp to unlock each of these nodes so it is a big investment so i wouldn't prioritize these until you have some spare cp left over after picking up all the other more important nodes Section 15, Example of Node Priority. Alright guys, now I'm going to give you an example of a priority list that you can follow. This is for the kind of player who's not well informed or really new to the whole worker system, uh, such as myself a week ago. <laughs> so if you already have a plan of action and say you want to make lumber crates or something, by all means go ahead and go your own route on this. But this is just a quick list for players to be able to follow and make some quick cash while they get their bearings together. First I'd start off with Velia as it's the most accessible of the initial regions along with Heidel. So in Velia I would pick up Logia farm for potatoes, Bertali farm for potatoes, and then Finto farm for potatoes. After you have the potato nodes, if you want you can go back and get the chicken nodes as well at Bartali and Finto farms. Next we go to Heidel guys. First I'd pick up Costa farm for the wheat, Moredi plantation for wheat, and then Alejandra farm for cooking honey. Then, if you want to level up processing, you can pick up Flax at Costa Farm and Flax at Moretti Plantation as well. Next up is my personal favorite, Valencia City. I'd first pick up the Date Palm nodes at Valencia Plantation and then at Ertl Farm. Then I'd pick up the Freake at Valencia Plantation. Optionally, you can get the Tef, but I didn't prioritize it. Tef isn't that lucrative compared to the others. Then if you come over to Arihaza Town, you can pick up the Ariha Palm Forest uh, node for the coconuts. Next, let's swing down to Sandgrain Bazaar. It has one of my favorite nodes for money, that is Nutmeg, right next to Sandgrain at Bazaar Farmland. Pick that up. Then later, when you have more CP to spare, you can come down to Crescent Shrine for Date Palm and Titanium more. Now we come over to Altanova. I did hold this one off towards the end because it takes quite a bit of CP investment to reach the sap nodes, but now that we are here, I'd first pick up the Gorgo Rock Belt on the eastern side for the Elder Tree Sap, then the Veterans Canyon for Elder Tree Sap, then I would work towards the Stone Tail Wasteland for the Acacia Sap, Elric Shrine, and Medea Northern Highlands for the White Cedar Sap. Now coming northeast to Shakatu Village, this is an excellent area for quick money. I would go towards the fig nodes first as they're really close and they're selling really well on North America right now. Then work your way towards Iris Canyon. Here you got Nutmeg and Elder Tree Sap, both very valuable. And then optionally you can get the Freake nodes at Bamboo Valley. So guys, if you want to go purely for money, I would recommend 
getting Shakatu Village first, but I recommended Altanova before Shakatu because the sap nodes are very valuable. If you're a new player and in the future you would want to get into bartering, you're going to need at least 5,000 of each Elder Tree, Acacia, and White Cedar Sap. So it's best to get started on that ahead of time. And if you choose not to, you can always sell that sap. So you can interchange Shakatu and Altanova in this list, but you know, play it by ear and do what's best for you. That's it for this priority list, guys. This is not set in stone. There are so many ways you can go about it, but the things I mentioned is just for you to get started and get you on your feet. But once you understand how this works and how you can better utilize it, for example, if you want to start crafting something or cooking something, you know, go for it. Don't worry about giving up a node for something you're actually going to utilize and level up a life skill with. So just keep it in mind. This was just an example and I hope you guys and I hope it helps you guys out. Section 16, going beyond the worker empire. All right, guys, now that you know how to set up a basic worker empire, it's time to think about the future. If you want to just sell these resources for money, that's perfectly fine. I do that. But in order to take this to the next level, you got to think how to utilize your resources into another life skill. For example, let's say you're a guru chef and you make guru boxes. And in order to make those boxes, you want to cook Valencia meals. So for Valencia meals, you're going to need stuff like date palm, frique, taff, even nutmeg and figs. So you want to set your workers to go gather those resources. And as they gather them up, then you can start turning them into Valencia meals. So if you were to cook Valencia meals and start selling them, they sell for about 27k each. However, if you're turning them into Guru boxes, the Guru boxes will make those Valencia meals be worth, say, around 50k each. So that's a significant increase. You do need to go manually gather a lot of other things such as line meat, snake meat, scorpion, etc. But having an effective worker empire set up will drastically reduce the cost for production. So. By utilizing these higher level life skills, you can make a medium priced resource be worth even more. Advanced players like to use um, their resources for say processing, making trash crates or money crates. There's a lot of different things you can do. Just explore the game, take it at your own pace and try to have fun. Eventually you'll start realizing the different avenues you can take and what might interest you. So when that time comes, you can just adapt your worker empire and go that direction. So hopefully the nodes that I showed you right now will get you started, but just realize that's not the end game. You can take this in multiple different routes and make even more money. Now for some final notes. All right, guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that this helped you guys out. Anyone who has any other tips and tricks that might benefit new players and beginners on setting up their own worker empires, please do let us know. It'd be good to share some information. And in the future, once I get to a more advanced stage where my worker empires become more complex and I learn a few more things about it, I'll be sure to make a follow up video and try to share some more information. Until then, thank you so much for watching guys. Please do like, comment and subscribe. Please do follow me on twitch.tv. I stream on Twitch and YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So it'd be great if you guys can drop by. I'd love to see you there. So until then, take care and see you next time.